The building is open. I do want to let you all know that the doors of the church is open. They are back open. Church is back in session. Just want to let you know we will still continue to have Zoom. We don't want to leave nobody behind. It is the effort of our leaders here at First Church not to leave anyone behind. And we will continue with Zoom as long as you are in attendance with us on this in, in this virtual Zoom um, by, by way of Zoom technology. So I just want to greet you this morning, tell you uh, welcome, 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 all of you. And our devotional scripture this morning will be coming from uh, Romans chapter 6, Romans, the sixth verse. And then we'll have a moment of prayer following. And then we will have uh, two selections followed by their pastor. So Romans chapter 6, if you're with me this morning, Romans chapter 6, and I'm going to read through the whole verse this morning. We're going to conclude at the end of the chapter. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once, but for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its just, in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be think that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you present yourself, your members, as slaves of uncleanliness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard of righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Please uh, bow a moment and pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, our God, Lord, we are just so grateful, Father God, to be found in your temple, in your dwelling place once more and again, Father God. Lord, we are just so grateful this morning, Father God, that you are still on the throne, Father God. We are so grateful, Father God, that, that we dwell with you in your house of prayer this morning, Father God. 
Lord, we grateful for the opportunity, Father God, just to, to talk to you this morning, Father God, to, to, to bring our burdens to the altar this morning, dear Lord. Lord, we'll come, Father God, we'll come this morning, Father God, on this first Sunday of June, Father God, in search of another breakthrough this morning, Father God. Somebody here, under the sound of my voice, somebody here by the way of Zoom, Father God, needs a breakthrough this morning, Father God. I don't know who they are, Father God. I don't know exactly what they needed, Father God. But Lord, I'm praying that you hear their cry, Father God. Well, we, we, we've come another Sunday, Father God, to hear your holy word, Father God. We've come another Sunday to hear your direction, Father God. Lord, we've come to grasp your word, Father God. And Lord, we hope, I hope I, in my prayer that every ear is open, Father God, that every ear is unstopped, Father God, that your word be delivered, Father God, as you so have. Now, Father God, Lord, I continue strength, Father God. I can continue wisdom among your people and your pastor, dear Lord. Lord, Lord, bless our first Christian family, Father God, and all those who are in connection with us all this morning, Father God. Lord, bless our sick and shut in this morning, Father God. Lord, bless our children on this morning, Father God. All those sheep who are scattered among us, Father God. Lord, I pray their strength, Father God. I pray their return to the sheepfold this morning, dear Lord. Father God, I continue to play many, pray many blessings of upon First Christian community, Father God. These things we ask in your son, Jesus the Christ, and all those who believe and agree, say amen and amen. Please join with us in the song and our pastor will be with us shortly after. Morning to the saints of God, we serve once again to give God all praise, glory, and honor on this beautiful Lord's day. The psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so I count it a privilege, I count it a blessing that we can come to you on this, this uh, first Sunday in June. Half the year is already passing. And so time is passing and we pass it extremely fast. And so we just bless the name of the Lord this day, giving him all the glory and the honor that due to his holy righteous name. And I say welcome to our First Christian Community Church, those who are on Zoom, those who will be listening later by Facebook or by YouTube, we just thank God for you coming by our way and sharing with us on another Sunday morning. Those here in the sanctuary, we thank God for you trusting your way to be here this morning with us. Amen. We just give God all praise, all glory and honor, which is due to his holy and righteous name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we will, we will begin our, our sermon. Our Father, how grateful and thankful we are that you blessed us once again to come together in thy name to enter into thy holy sanctuary, Lord, to praise you and bless you and to say thank you. We certainly count it, Lord, a privilege, Lord. We don't deserve it, Lord, but you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we can't help but to praise you and acknowledge you, Lord. We have a thousand tongues. We just couldn't thank you enough for the goodness that you keep showing toward us. And we know that all things are for our good and your glory. And so we exalt you and we bless you, Lord. We pray for those who are listening this morning. We pray for those who will be listening later on today, Lord, that this sermon, this message that you've given will impact their hearts and that you will draw them near to you, oh God. Father, we love you. We honor you. We say thank you for all that you're doing, all you have done and will do. And all praise, Lord, and honor and yours and yours alone. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, let's go to chapter 4, and we're going to go down to verse 16. 2 Corinthians, chapter number 4, ending at verse 16, look what it reads. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outer man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, though for but a moment, is working for us. Yes, for more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Amen. And give glory unto the Lord. There is an old adage that says that you don't judge a book by its cover. That's it, that's it. And there's no truth in it because uh, everything about our lives stuff spiritual spiritually before they are physical 
We are not to judge the book by its cover, nor are we to judge people by their external exterior because we have no true sense of justice and we have no true sense of judgment. Mm -hmm. We have a way of, of, of judging men based upon our own presupposition. I feel that way, so that's why I think the other person should feel that way. I receive things that way. I think the other person should receive things that way. And we all do that because we, we have this, this, this uh, way that we judge men based upon our own, our own understanding. See it, preacher. Well, let me let you know that, that our lives are spiritual long before it is physical. If you remember when God fashioned Adam from the dust of the ground, he was just a, a endless, endless a uh, body lying there. And then God stooped down and breathed the breath of life into Adam and he became a living soul. He became one now who is what? Spiritual in nature. And so therefore, when you're talking about the spiritual nature, you, you got to understand that the spiritual nature exposes our attitude. Uh -huh. Our attitude uh, is so important because it reveals what's in our hearts. Come on, preacher. You know, what we say is not the what we say, it's not the what we do. The question is why we do. Come on, please. Because why we do it answers the, the part that's in our heart because everything starts with coming out of our heart. Even Jesus said the issues of life is what is coming out of our heart and it will be revealed in our speech if it's in our heart. Mm. Even the creation of man, he was so lifeless, but yet he became a living soul. And then God said to Adam, the soul that sin shall surely, shall surely die. So it's on the inside, and then it reveals itself on, on the outside. Amen. That lets us know, brothers and sisters, that we have a dual nature. We have two natures. We have a nature that relates to the world, which is our physicality, and we have a nature that relates to God, which is our spirituality. We have a dual nature. That's why... Paul could say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 around verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why? Because the nature, I have a new nature now that can respond to God. I have a new nature that have a capacity to receive the Holy Spirit. I have a new nature now that can be moved by the Spirit of God that can move in my consciousness and in my being and allow me to be a vessel for God's use. Say it, say it. And then I have my, my physical life, mm. my talents, my gifts, my abilities, my thoughts, my actions, my deeds. All that come from my physical life allow me to what? To be uh, identified in this earthly realm. And so I have a dual nature, but yet my soul is the thing that is required of me. God is not coming to inspect my body. He's coming to ex inspect my soul. And so Paul concludes on our, in our text that we live our lives really from the inside out. Yes, the book of Corinthians is the book of the Pauline epistles. It is the second book of the writing of the letter to Corinthian that Paul writes to the church of Corinth. This second letter is unlike the first letter. This second letter is written to, to support that which Paul had said to them in the first letter, dealing with some of the issues in the Corinthian church. And so he writes a second letter to see if any changes have been made and anything had been done since the last letter that he wrote unto them. And Paul writes this letter on his way to Corinthian from Macedonia. And he going to well Corinth because he wanted to to see how they were getting along. So he writes this letter, not only to, to, to see if um, had anything changed, but he writes a letter to let them know that he was on, on their way. And whatever they thought about him or whatever they thought about uh, what he said to them in the first letter, they would have an opportunity to share with him and he would have an opportunity to speak to them and answer some of the questions. Mm -hmm. And so Paul was writing to, to inform them that when he sees them, he's going to prove to them that his bark has a bite also. And so our text this morning uh, deals with the fundamentals of the believer's existence. Our existence begins on the inside, and it is manifested on, on the outside. All of us are facing declines in our physical bodies, yet 
if we who are saved, we who, who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, we who, who are seeking God, our inner man is being, re being renewed day by day by day by day. Why? Because we have an eternal destiny. We're not just living our lives just to live our lives. We're not just doing what we're doing. No, we are headed somewhere. We have an eternal destiny. We have an appointment with God. And we have an appointment where all men will have to give an account unto God for, for their lives. And so it behooves us to understand that we ought to seek the things which are above and not the things which are up below. We ought to seek things. What Paul tells them in Colossians 3 and 3, if you be risen with See those things which are above where Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. So I want our church to know by way, by way of this sermon that we live our lives really from the, from the inside out. And I know we love the physical life. I know we like to enjoy all the things of nature and life. And I know like we like to be engaged in all kinds of activities as it relates to our life. But this is not all that meets the eye. We have a spiritual life that we have to live before God and before men every day of our lives. Come on, preacher. And what I found out is we ignore our spiritual life, we're going to struggle. And if we, if we connect with our spiritual life, we're going to suffer. Yes, sir. So they both going to cause us some hardship. If we could, if we ignore God in our physical life, we're going we to struggle with what? Struggle with the meaning of life. Struggle with the yeah. meaning yeah. of mortality. Struggle with the meaning of why things is and why things are not. But then if we turn away from that and, and turn our life over to God, then we're going to suffer with him. Yes, because Paul said, I'm going to know him and the power of his suffering and to know him and to walk with him. We will know him in the power of his suffering. Every man of God, every woman of God, whoever walked with God had to experience seasons of suffering. Job was an upright man, one who was sure evil, but yet he had seasons of suffering. Moses, the great emancipator of God's people, had a season of suffering. Yes, yes. Isaiah, the great prophet of Israel, he had seasons yes. of suffering. Ooh. Jeremiah, who prophesied the, the destruction of Jerusalem, he had seasons of suffering. And even Jacob, who was, who was the father of the nation of the twelve, he had seasons of suffering. King David, the great king of Israel, suffered seasons oh, of suffering. Those who God choose, those who God called, had seasons of suffering. Even Jesus, our Lord, went to the cross of Calvary to experience suffering and sin and shame that you and I can walk mm. in the newness of our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, and so, yes, our outer man of perishing, and God is not requiring our outer man, but again, requiring our inner man. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It's our duty as believers to strengthen the inner man through obedience, strengthen the inner man through trust. Strengthen the inner man through faith in the will of God and in the ways of God and in the wisdom of God. We have to strengthen our faith and our trust in God because our inner man has to be renewed. It kind of reminds me of a story that two dogs that were getting ready to get in a fight. One was a big dog and one was a little dog. And one of, one of the owners said, who you think will win the fight? Mm. The big dog or the little dog? He said the one that the one that had eaten. Mm. Because if you start the big dog, the little dog will win. If you start the little dog, the, the, the big dog will win. But but guess what? Either one of them, if you don't feed them, if you don't feed them, neither one of them could win. And if you don't feed your spirit and your soul, you will not awesome. be able to walk in awesome. the newness of life. You will not be able to live a resurrected life. You will not be able to live a crucified life. My Lord, my Lord. You got to feed because the, the, the inner man is being made renewed and being renewed day by day. We're being strengthened in our walk. The question becomes, how do we live from the inside out? How do you do it? How do you, how do you come to that? How do you do it? You have to learn how to walk with God. And I realize that there are many men who are saved. Mm -hmm. There are many men who have a relationship with God. But I only know very few men walk. Why? Because walking with God is the road less traveled. Yes, it is. Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow, narrow is the way that leads to life. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to walk on the road less traveled. Let's go. Very 
remind me of Dorothy. Mm. She wanted to get to Emerald City. And of course, you know the story. They said, how do I get there? I want to get back home. She said, well, follow the yellow brick road. The road going to take you to Emerald City. You know the story. It was a fictitious story. But if we're going to get to the place where God would have us to be, we're going to have to follow the road that is less traveled. We're going to have to follow the road where every now and then you're going to find somebody on that road. There ain't going to be a whole lot of people there. There ain't going to be a whole lot of fanfare. There ain't going to be a, a whole lot of jumping and shouting. There ain't going to be quietness on the road. And sometimes yeah. you're just going to have to walk alone. And every now and then yes. you get up ahead and, look, and you'll see somebody there. And you say, where you going? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You said I could hear the song. I can say, I'm going up y'all. I'm going up y'all. I'm going up y'all to be with my Lord. I'm on the I'm on the road, and on the narrow road, there will be some tribulation sometimes. There will be some setbacks sometimes. There'll be some heartache sometimes. There'll be some heartbreak sometimes. But, but you still gotta press on and walk on. Like the song I said, I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm going all the way. Say this old world may get me down, but I'll but I'll make it through. All the way. All the way with Jesus. Well, let me just examine four points how, how to live on the inside out. Let me just give you four points to help you with this. The first point I want you to understand about living from the inside out is that we are in a failing condition. Or should I say a fallen condition? Sin has caused all of us to come short of the glory of God. Sin has called all of us to fail and to fall and to fumble. The only thing that we can do successfully without God is sin. But what I found out, failure in the world is failure, but failure in God is not failure because we have learned from Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things will work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. When I found out when it's for our good, it's always for his glory, and when it's for his glory, it's always going to be for our good, but we're in a fallen condition. Come on, preacher. We are fading away. Mm. We're fading away every day. Even we are fainting in our circumstances. They got things in this society that's causing us to lose courage and to lose heart. There are things that are going on that cause us to give up and even to give out. Some of us are giving over to our circumstances. Some of us are fainting and getting weary and worried along the way. I know we have disturbing politics. I know we had a national pandemic. I know we have a famine in the land. And I know that we are having, we're having a, a racial conflict as we go. I know. Because we're in a fallen condition. And many of us are fading away because the circumstance is just too much. But I'm reminded that David told us in Psalm 27 and 14 to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And to be of good courage, and he will strengthen our hearts. Therefore, he says to us, do not lose heart, even though our outer man is perishing daily. We are falling and we're failing. I hear him saying in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, Paul says, no, 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 don't get weary. Don't get weary in well doing. For we will reap a harvest if we faint not. I think he said, be, he said, fast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm. For as much as you know, your, your faith is not in vain in the Lord. Your work is not in vain in the Lord. I can hear him saying in Isaiah, that Isaiah said, wait on the Lord. And those that wait shall renew their strength. And they shall mount like wings, like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We are in a fallen condition. That's just what it is. And I said, some, some are saying it's, going to, it's getting better. It's not going to get any better because Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away. On, For me, my word will never pass away. Mm -hmm. And so we have to live on the inside out because we are living in a fallen condition. Secondly, we are being furnished down. Mm. Though we are losing heart, though we are fading away, we are being furnished daily. Because, because the writer of Jeremiah says to us after the destruction of Jerusalem, he said that we have fresh grace mm. 
and we have new mercies yeah. every day. Yeah, it reminds me of the nation of Israel when they were in the desert. Come on, God ran manna from on high yes. in the desert. Yeah. And he told them every day, go and get just enough for you to eat. Yes, and don't leave any over. Don't keep any over overnight. Because if you do, it's going to spoil. And I just discovered the reason why God did not want the manna to stay overnight. Because he wanted to rain down some fresh. Come on, please. It's a new manna every day. That's it. That's and it. so, yeah, you got some new grace today that was not like yesterday. Yesterday's grace have already been used up. And so don't, don't be alarmed if God feeds you day by day and moment by moment. Don't be fearful if God gives you new grace. That He don't like old grace. And remind me of some people, don't like leftovers. But God don't give leftovers either. Because he got new grace and he got new mercies every day. Why? Because the situation in our life constantly change. But when I found out that God could give the same because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I'm the Lord thy God who change it not. Mm -hmm. And so we're being furnished daily. And I realized that we're losing limbs and, and, our, and our faculties are not functioning like they should. And from the outside, it looked like it's all over. Come on, preacher. But if they just could see, if they just could see our inside, Mm. If they could just see that our souls are, are moving toward, toward the Lord. If they could study inside. And I hear uh, Jeremiah saying, though the Lord's mercies are not consumed. Uh, because his, his compassions, they do not fail. Great is your faithfulness. And I'm saying, if you can't rely on your own faith, mm. God's faithfulness is what we need. Every day of our lives. Yes, and so we're being furnished daily. I know you know they don't seem like it because it seems like it's getting worse. But yeah, it may get worse on the outside, on the outside. But it won't be that way on the inside because God has promised to give us a peace yeah. which surpasses all oh, understanding that will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's why I told us don't be anxious. Don't be anxious for nothing, but by everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He said, yet yeah, our inward man is being renewed day by day. And then he turned around and let us know something else. He said, for this light affliction, oh. this light affliction that oh. you and I are going through is but for a moment. Come on, but. In other words, thirdly, we, we are experiencing temporary trouble. It's not trouble always. Even the psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy is still coming in the morning. He said, do you light affliction? And I know sometimes it's too hard. We say it's too hard and, and it's just too much. And I just can't take no more. But it's only a light affliction. And Paul calls it a light affliction because it cannot be compared to what's working out for us in eternal glory. Come on, preacher. And to bring me to the thought in Hebrews chapter number 12. Uh -huh. He said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, yeah. who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross on, and despised the shame. How do you get through in church? You got to look at what is set before you. Yeah, you have afflictions right now. Yeah, you have some temporary troubles right now. But they're only momentary because it cannot keep, be compared to where you're going. It cannot be compared to whose you are and who you are. It cannot be compared to what the Lord is gonna do on the other side. And I hear him saying that we are, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. And so we are hard pressed on every side, but yet not much. We are persecuted, but not, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not struck down and not destroy it. Because we're always caring about the dying of our Lord Jesus in our, in our flesh. And so there it is, though we have temporary troubles, we are fully aware and to know that trouble don't last, trouble don't last always. And so we will experience trouble in this life. Because David told us in Psalm 34, around verse 17, many of the afflictions of the righteous. 
but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. And so we got to be mindful that we have to feed our spirit daily because in the end, only what you do for Christ will last. And I know we're living in a period where we say black lives matter. And I understand that, but, but when it comes to God, save lives, save lives really matter. Because in the end, the question is going to be whether they were saved or whether they were lost. In other words, when the books are open, it's only going to determine whether your name was written in the land of life or it was not. And so the temporary troubles that we experience go through them, yes, they're coming, they're real. Mm -hmm. But just remind, just be reminded that it will do something for your inside because, because the tribulation work in patience and patient experience and experience hope. And hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God has been shed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And finally, we are we are not to, we live from the inside out because we have a faith that is fortified. What are you saying, preacher? We have a faith that that's shaping our future. We have a faith that has determined that we are that we are saved mm -hmm. by grace through faith. We have a faith that's going to carry us through the life. How do you say that, preacher? Because Paul said, for we do not look at the things which are seen. But at the thing which are not seen, for the thing which are seen, they are only temporal. Yeah. But the thing that are not seen is eternal. In other words, our faith helps us to see the reality of the kingdom of God. Our faith helps us to understand that in this life we will have tribulation. Our faith helps us to understand that God is going to keep every promise that he's ever made. Our faith will bring us to the point where we can say like Job, though he slay me, yes, sir. yet will I trust him. Our faith can say, yeah, it is difficult, but, but I'm trusting and leaning and depending on God. Yeah. I'm standing on his promises and I'm walking by faith and, and not by sight. Yes. And I understand that, that my faith is constantly being fortified as I live each day. My, my, my. And so I conclude by saying we have to live our life on the inside, from the inside out. I realize that we want, all of us want to live a long life. All of us want to have a successful life. Yes, sir. All of us want to have a great life. All of us want to make our strides and make our way in life that people can, can say, oh, that's a great one. Oh, Oh, that's a good one. Oh, this person is this and this person is that. But you have to be mindful if you're not feeding your inner man, if you're not growing in your inner man, there is a, also a scripture that says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world Come on, preacher. and to lose his soul? All of us will come to the end of our lives where we're going to have to come to the end of the journey where it's all over. And no matter how rich we are, we're going to die poor. No matter how influential we are, we're going to die alone. No matter how rich we are, we may have buildings named after us, but the money will not go with us. We're going to go alone when that hour comes. Mm. But I'm reminded if your inner man is being renewed day by day, when your hour will come, you'll be ready to go on to see the Lord for yourself. On, and no man know the hour that their soul is going to be required of them. But I'm telling you, if you live from the inside out, you'll have a perspective of life unlike any other life. Mm. In other words, the things that used to vex you don't vex you no more. The things that make you cry oh, don't so. make you cry no more. The things yeah. that used to make you sigh don't make you sad no more. The thing that used to make you sad don't make you sad no more because right. you're being renewed day by day. And even when the uncomfortable things of life is staring you in the face and it may cause you to cry and it may cause you to feel bad, but but you what you can know and what you will know that God will, God will see me through. 
And I realized that God will sometimes appoint things, and then sometimes He will allow things. But whatever He points or allow is still in God's hand. And so I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but whatever you got going on, why don't you just put it in, put it in His hands? Whatever you're facing this morning, when you just turn it over to the Lord. I'm reminded yeah. of a song that said that, that this, this, this trouble that I had, I, I kept getting deeper involved. This problem that I had, it kept on vexing me, but I turned it over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it and I gave it over to the Lord and he, he worked it out. I don't know how God gonna fix this, but what I do know, he can fix it. Yes, Abraham God. had taken Isaac on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And God had told him, I need you to sacrifice Isaac. I'm getting happy right here. Yes. And as they were walking along the way, Isaac recognized, Father, we have the wood. Mm. And Father, we have the fire. And Father, I'm not used to going to church without a sacrifice. Come on, yeah. Daddy, I don't see no sacrifice. Yeah. You show the Lord is going to be pleased with just fire mm -hmm. and wood. And Abraham had to turn to Isaac and say, Isaac, don't worry about the sacrifice. Yeah. God will provide the sacrifice. And when I look at it from the Hebrew, what it was saying is that God will see to this. And so when they got to the top of the mountain, Abraham turned to Isaac and said, Isaac, the Lord will see to this. And you are, you are our sacrifice today. And the Bible said that he laid Isaac on the wood and he tied Isaac, tied him up. And Abraham took the knife and lifted above his head. And when he would have stabbed Isaac through, there was a voice from heaven. To Abraham, say thy hand. Now I know that you love me above everything. And God got Isaac, got him off the wood, and then he turned up a little ram in the thicket. Somebody asked the preacher why it was a ram, and it wasn't a lamb, wasn't a lamb because Jesus had not been in Cornelius. But now I don't have to worry about the ram because the lamb of oh, God. God died on the tree some 2,021 years ago. And now as a result of the cross, as a result of Calvary, as a result of the resurrection, I could live from the inside out. Yeah. I could live from the inside out. God bless you. Because my inner man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is being made with me. Yes. Day by day. Day by day. I don't know what I'm going to end up with when it comes to the end of my life. I may have one arm and one leg. My, my, my. Or my enemy. Yeah. I may end up being blind before it's over. But my enemy. Yeah. Yes, sir. I may have death. Can't hear nothing. But my enemy. Yeah. I may be the only child left of five. But my enemy. Yeah. Come on. I may not, may, not, may not be able to walk. But my inner man, I may not have a home to live in, but my inner man, I may not be able to get so secure in the other thing, but my inner man is secure. Yes, sir. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I just want to tell you my faith and my hope mm. is built on nothing yes. less yes. in but Jesus' blood and his righteousness. My, my, my. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Come on, sir. Holy leaning on Jesus' name. On Christ the Son of God. Yeah, all the grounds of sinking sins. Yes, I ask you to live your life yeah. from the inside out. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't matter what's going on, and it does matter. And I understand. I'm not telling you don't ignore your house. Come on, sir. But I'm telling you, there is a blessed hope. There is, there is help. There is a presence. There is a power that will see you through. Yeah, and that is the blessed. From the Lord. So hang on in there. Hold on. Don't throw in the towel yet. They got 15 rounds to this fight. This might be on round two. 
stay there, stay, you know, stay, stay in the field like the old folks. Stay until the war is in. And God will. And God will see you through. Let us pray, our Father. We don't know what to do. Many times we don't know what to say. And as our physical experiences are leaving us in some form, in some shape, in some way, we still can rejoice and know that we're drawing closer to you. We can rejoice in knowing that, that you, we have a peace for surpassing understanding. Yes, yes, we can be rejoice in knowing that we have been justified by faith. And even when we can't see, Lord, we can stand. And we can stand knowing that we have an eternal rest in place, knowing that we have a, a relationship with you. We have it, and we live in each day, Lord. As we continue to open our, our hearts to you, Lord, we know you will fill us by your spirit. Yes, you will. You will grow us in the way that you will have us. Yes, you will. And you will keep strengthening us in times of yes, weakness. Yes, you will. And you will never, ever, ever leave never. us alone. Never leave us alone. Oh, never alone. Promise, oh Lord, that we yes. you So, Lord, we 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 your people. We the sheep of your pasture. Yes, Teach us and help us. Yes. Give us the desire to want to live from the inside out. Yes, that others may see our good works. Yes, and glorify you, which is in heaven, Father. And Father, we know it's going to be for our good, and it's going to be for your glory. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. There may be somebody in our midst this morning but never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to come to the Lord today. I want to give you an opportunity to accept him, accept his saving grace, accept his substitutionary sacrifice on the cross for the remission of sin and for the forgiveness of sin. Sin has placed all of us and caused all of us to face eternal death. But in Christ Jesus, there is no dying. He is the first fruit from the, from the grave, never to die again. And we will be in him, he will be in us. But you have to accept that by faith. For the Bible teaches us that many have received him, for they gave me power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You have to receive it by faith. You have to accept it. You have to agree with God that you are a sinner. You have to agree with God that you need a Savior. You have to agree with God on the testimony of, of Jesus Christ, that he is, that he is the Savior, and that he is Lord. And so I just want to invite you to a, a simple prayer that will help you to, to enter into the kingdom, because unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. It's just a simple prayer that says, Dear Father, I know I'm a sinner, and I want to be saved. I know I cannot save myself, but I believe the testimony of God through Christ Jesus that he died and that he was buried and that he rose again to walk into the newness of life. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and come into my life and save me. I just cannot save myself. And I open my heart to receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to save me, Lord, and help me to be that person that you would have me to be. If you're honest with God, it's the same with God. Salvation is yours. But the Bible teaches us in Romans 10, in Romans 13, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. He also said, well, how can we believe in whom we not heard? And how can we hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they've been sent? And I'm here to tell you and I'm here to testify of Jesus Christ. It is for your belief. It is for your receiving. If you say yes to the Lord, and if you be honest with him, you come into your life and save you. And if you're honest with God, and you have prayed for the Lord Jesus to come into your, in your life, welcome to the family of God. And I certainly would love to hear from you and like to share with you and give you some information that would help you on this journey to help you to continue on to live out the life that God has already, already set for you. Let me say to you, if you say yes to the Lord, this is the first day of the rest of your life with God. Not that he didn't know you, but you had no knowledge of him. Now you've been made alive. Now you've been made quickened. You were dead in trespassing and sin. And now you have life. 
and you're going to have it more abundantly. Now it becomes your responsibility as a believer to walk after the Lord, to walk with God. And the first act of obedience is to be baptized into his name, baptized into the body. And if you so desire to do that, I certainly would love to hear, hear from you because the Bible said, whosoever they that glad, I'm sorry, be that glad to receive the word of God, they will baptize. And the Lord added to the church daily. And so we would love to hear from you and we thank God for you. Amen. Okay, the next Sunday is our Lord's, is our Lord's table, our Lord's Supper Sunday, those who need sacraments. If you would just send Kelly a text that you make so that you have what you need to, so you can participate in the, at the Lord's Supper. So if you're in need of it, then get in contact with her. And if you get in contact with me, I can get in contact with her, and we can make sure that you will be able to participate with us. We don't want you to not be able to participate in the Lord's table. All right, let me just um, pray for the giving. Those who give it to give the five, those who are, who, uh, who are giving physically, we, we want to pray for the giving and thank God for you giving. Continue to give to the work of the Lord for it takes care of the expense of the church and the work of the ministry. God told us to give the time, the gift, and the offering unto Him. And it's for and, and bless them a hundredfold on their giving, Lord. And I'm praying as, as, as just as much as they pour out, that you will continue to pour in, Lord. Because you said he who trusted you would not be in lack of anything. And so I'm praying that you will continue to bless the giving. I'm praying, oh Lord, that you would allow us to use it to continue the work of the ministry, the strength of the church, oh Lord. That we will continue to do the thing that we need to do. That will give you all praise, glory, and honor. So we thank you for the giving right now, Lord. And we ask your special blessing upon it. And that you all will receive the benediction. Our Father, our God, we thank you. For reminding us that we really live our lives from the inside out. Yes. We thank you for our physical life. We thank you for the gifts and the talents and abilities that we have in this life. And I realize, Lord, that time we just want to hold on to our life as long as we can. Yes. But you told us that we must uh, save our life, we're going to lose it. And then we're to lose our life, we're going to save it. But in spite of that, because we are saved, help us to grow closer to you and feed our inner man that we may grow in your grace and your knowledge of God. And that we continue to be a witness to you in this earth, that there is a reality of serving you with true and the living God. So we just thank you this morning for our time of sharing. We ask that you continue to bless and guide us and lead us in the way that you have us to go. And all that we say, we do, we always be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless your hearts this morning. Let me just say good morning to all of you.